Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to use the data validation tools. This group of tools will help you to reduce errors during the capturing of information. They will also help you to limit data entries to a specific predefined values. So let's get on. The data validation tools can be found at the ribbon tab data. Then go to the data tools section and we will see a data validation button on a menu. Let's click on the button and that will open a new window. On this new window, we can see three tabs, settings, input message, and error alert. On the settings, we can find the different allow criteria we can assign to the cell or a range. The default is any value, meaning there is no restriction on what you can input. Then we can find whole number, decimal, list, date, time, text length, and custom. The input message is a label that we can display on the cell or range to tell the user of the spreadsheet what kind of data is allowed. Then the error alert is the message we can display to the users if we try to input a different type of data than the specified. There are three types of alerts, stop, warning, and information. Let's see how all these work with this sample spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is intended to capture the sales transaction from my store. This current version has issues because the user can capture wrong information, especially on the dates, the quantity sold, and the part numbers, causing problems at the time of trying to analyze the information. So we need to fix that. The simplest way of using data validation is assigning what kind of data the cell can accept. Select cell A2, go to the ribbon tab data, open the data validation window, and select settings. Search for date on the criteria and select. Now we need to define a range. Let's say we will capture only data from 2022. Then the star will be January 1st, 2022 and the end date, December 31st, 2022. Then click OK and our validation is created. Let's test it. Select cell A2 and type February 1st, 2021, then press enter. We have an error alert that shows we cannot proceed because the data does not match our allowed values. So that portion works. We can change the message we send to the user to be very clear why the input cannot be taken. Select cell A2, click on the validation button, and then go to the tab error alert. On the message section, let's add something like date not in the range. Please type a correct date, then click OK. And let's try it again. Select cell A2 and type February 1st, 2021, then press enter, and there we have our custom message. Let's do something similar for quantities. Select cell F2, open the validation window, and search for whole number and select. Here, it will also ask us about a range for the input. Minimum, we will use 1, and for max, we will use 5. And let's make a change on the error alert. Instead of using a stop, let's use warning, and add the next message. Only whole numbers can be accepted if higher than five requires additional validation. This way, the validation will only ask you for confirmation that the input is correct. Let's check it. I will type 1.2 on cell F2 and press enter. And we got our error message. Click no and fix it. Then type six. Now let's click yes, and that allows you to use the data. The next level of data validation would be a list that you can predefine for the users to limit the input. For example, for the transaction type column, we will only allow two entries. 
walk-in, or corporate deal. Select cell B2, then open the data validation window and search for list and select. Now on the source, we can type two options, walk-in, comma, corporate PO. Now move to the tab input message and add the next message. Select from the drop down list and click OK. Now, every time that we select one of those cells, we will have that message to give us a hint on what input can be used. Click on the drop down and select one of them. And there we go. If you try to type something else, we will get an error until you select one from the list. The list can also be defined by a list in the spreadsheet, especially if the list is too long or if you have it associated with other relevant information. For example, this little database has the part number, description, and unit price. So we can use this list. Select cell C2, then open the data validation window and search for list and select. Then on the source, click on the arrow and select range L2 to L4. And click again on the arrow and click OK. And we have the drop down list ready for us. Let's test it. Select cell C2, open the drop down list, and select one from the list. There we go. Now, how can we use the associated data with this part number? Well, for this task, we won't use the validation tool, but we will use the XLOOKUP function. For cell D2, type the equal sign, XLOOKUP, open a parenthesis, select cell C2, comma, select range L2 to L4, press F4 to make the reference absolute, comma, select M2 to M4, press F4 to make the reference absolute, close the parentheses and press enter. And there we go. Let's test it with a different part number. And it is working. Let's do the same with the unit price. Copy and paste the cell with the formula, and we have to do a few adjustments. Double click on the cell, then drag the selection from D2 to C2, and then the range from column M to column N, and press enter. And there we go, we have the unit price. Let's test it changing the part number on the list, and all is working. Now we can make sure these cells remain as formulas and don't allow manual input. Select cell D2, then open the data validation tool, on the criteria search for custom, and select. On the formula bar, type the next validation rule. Equal is formula, open a parenthesis, and then select cell D2, close the parenthesis, and click OK. Now, if you try to input a value to this cell, it will show an error. We can also copy and paste just the validation rule from this cell. Right click and copy, then select cell E2, right click and search for paste special, then select validation and click OK. Now let's click on the data validation button just to confirm it did copy. And there we have. The last column we need to complete is the extended price. This one, we will make it a formula as well. Quantity times unit price. Select cell G2, equal sign, then select cell E2 times F2, press enter. And we can copy cell E2 and paste a special on G2 with only validation. Click OK. And there we have. Now, all our first row is ready for input. All we need to do is delete the information and copy and paste the cells down, and our spreadsheet is ready to be used. I hope you find this video helpful to get you familiarized with Excel. Thank you for watching, and if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get access to my series of tutorials to learn Excel step by step. I'll see you in the next video.